Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm Tucker, joined by my Pokemon-hearted friend, Abram Buehner. And today, we are talking about the two new random news trailers that were dropped by the Pokemon channel on YouTube early this morning, uh, revealing some small amounts of new information for both Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, But before we get into that, we want to talk to you about Pokemon. Most of us just don't shut up about Pokemon. So if you want to talk to us about Pokemon or anything else, gaming or otherwise, uh, join our Discord. The link is in the description. And there's also a subscribe button down there. You can really? move your mouse over that and press down quickly. It does the job. There's a like button. And there's also a notification bell, which is pretty awesome. And lets you know when we're up to our shenanigans. You but can Abram- also, I just want to know. You can also press the button down slowly if you want. That's true. You can savor it. You can savor yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Abram, we're here to talk about Pokemon. None of that yeah. subscribing nonsense. What did you think of these trailers this morning? Because it sounds like you've got some mixed impressions. I do have mixed impressions, and it, it splits across the same line that it always has, which is I think BDSP still doesn't look very good, and yeah. I think that Legends RCs looks better every time. Yep. So let's let's just tackle in that order, I think. So let's start with BDSP. Yeah, that was the one I watched first. I didn't yes. realize there was an RCS trailer. I woke up, I'm like, oh, this was new on the, what's on the YouTube. And yeah. then uh, I saw a uh, news for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This is weird. The it only time we've ever seen those games was in two trailers over the last seven months or whatever. So why are they randomly now doing like YouTube update videos? Yeah, we had like a pseudo Pokemon direct on Twitter because at 9 a.m. this morning, they posted those two trailers uh, back to back. So I watched both. Um, I think so BDSP. So here's the deal. I, I think the BDSP, the problem BDSP. child. I think the game looks better every time we see it. I think it looks more polished. I think it looks more feature yeah. complete, but I just think that my issues with the game are so endemic to its core design that mm. you can't show me what I think is a pretty clever solution to uh, an HM laden region like Sinnoh yeah. without me just sighing at the fact that you're trying to get me hyped to see uh, Riley, but Riley is like this tall and yeah. has no emotion in the overworld. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the di- dichotomy I feel. I, I think that there are some good things here, like that HM uh, revamp, um, but the rest kind of par for the course. Yeah, it was interesting to watch this because when they were going through this news, it was really just, hey, uh, things that are in Sinnoh are still in these games. And yes. like maybe half of them have been altered for the better, for modernization reasons, for for streamlining the experience. So we don't have to deal with the horseshit of older Pokemon games, like uh, the Poketch now acting sort of as Pokeride Summon, where you yeah. just summon a bee barrel to use Rock Climb, summon a Staraptor to use Fly, um, which is great. That's ideal. Yeah. That, that Good solution. knocks everything out of the issue of, oh God, there's a lot of HM problems in, uh, in yes. Sinnoh, especially when you're getting to the end of the game and you're in Victory Road and there's strength and rock smash and rock climb and surf and waterfall and you got all this crap everywhere. That'll make that a lot more streamlined and, and fun to explore and engage with with your team. And they also talked a little bit about Amity Square, which has yeah. been upgraded and you can now walk around with all six of your Pokemon, which is a small touch, but it's nice nonetheless having your entire team yeah. out there with you. Um, but other than that, it was kind of just like, hey, you know, Gardenia and Cheryl and Riley, they're yes. in the game. Uh, you know, Poffin making. Guess what, Buster? You can still do it. Uh, the Poketch is back. And it's like, yeah, what, what, did, what did you expect? I mean, what I expected was that the poke catch was going to be integrated a little bit better into the UI than <laughs> than putting it in the fucking corner. Like with it's a the live original DS, camera. like quality right. and colors and sprites. Yeah, it just things like this for me are emblematic of why BDSP just isn't working. For yeah, me. because you couldn't have come up with anything better. I mean, I don't know what I would have done, but I'm also not being contracted by the Pokemon company, which yes. is the biggest media and, company in the and world. And being assisted you know. by Junichi Masuda. <laughs> right. Right. I, I just, it's it's inelegant. Yeah. I think it's completely immersion breaking. I, I think it's a terrible stroke of, of UI design. Mm-hmm. And so that frustrates me, but ultimately I just feel like it's baked into the cake. We yeah. know what BDSP is. Mm-hmm. BDSP is fourth gen Pokemon back with circumspect changes and what's mm-hmm. weird is just like okay we're gonna completely overhaul hms but we're gonna leave so much of the rest of the core game alone and just mm-hmm. 
it's a really strange tension between what's being changed and what isn't. 100%. So, uh, I, again, I think the games look better when we see them. I, I, I think agree. they look more complete, but they just, this, they're just not what I want. This trailer, watching it and, like, trying to give myself a little bit of a refrain to, like, hey, these games actually aren't visually as bad as they, no, as especially not. as they were when they were revealed. They look I a lot I might not better. be a huge fan of the, of the uh, art style, of the aesthetic, but... From a lighting engine, from textures, from all that, it certainly has improved. And and yes. I give them, I give Ilka major props for that because if it if the game had released with the flat lighting and bland textures that it was in, shown off as originally, that would be a huge problem. But I'm sure they'll also look better in motion when you're I'm playing sure them will. yourself. Uh, maybe it's a game that takes some getting used to in terms of its art style. Um, looks better when you're playing it rather than a trailer. But this this trailer didn't get me more excited for the games i am yeah. happy that the hm thing is is fixed and that will make those games a better experience definitely but it also showed me that yeah they're still only putting like 45 percent effort into this yeah but tucker the legends arceus but tucker you said you said that that trailer to get you more excited for bdsp but this legends arceus trailer got me a lot more excited for this game and i was oh, already yeah. pumped up for it oh so, yeah where, where do you want to start with this one um i would well i just want to quickly start with one random shot that they didn't like linger on but you're riding the Basque legion around and you you jump up in the air and you throw the pokeball to catch an artillery while you're jumping it's like oh my god they made the movement fluid and the and yes. the actions connect and stuff it's not like you have to be sitting still to throw the pokeball you could be riding on whatever you're riding on the Histoian Braviary and diving under these things. Like, oh my God, the movement yes. of those ride of the mounts looks like it's going to just inherently be a ton of fun to control and explore the map with. No, that that was my favorite part of the trailer. That yeah. is the thing that got me the most excited out of all this new information. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't the only one to just lock onto that tiny yes. little detail. Because what it conveys to me is that my concern, even after the second trailer, I might not be founded of maybe of how do we interact with the Pokemon? How do we capture them? How do we yeah. move throughout the world? And what we're sh sh seeing here is you just do. Yeah, you just you just do what like what makes sense yeah. for a modern open world video game. Right. You're, you're doing those actions in a Pokemon right. game. No, it's it's exactly correct. It is it is the sort of breath of the wild thing of this is how I would approach this situation yes. if I were really there. And the game is just letting me do that. And it just looks so much fun. The world looks really great. Um, so that was easily the highlight of the trailer for me, but there's also oh, a ton yeah. of other details like yeah. the trainer customization, which oh, is yeah. so robust and looks so great. And the idea of having this, have having Jubilife city, having these different stores to go into Village. and vendors to talk to. It's not city yet. Don't, don't, there's a fucking Freudian slip there. It seems like there's a really great hub to return to. 100%. And I think on top of that, well, I was kind of expecting that from the idea that there's a core village. Like, okay, yeah, of course, that's going to be the place where you return and shop and all that. Yeah. There, It seems like there are more outposts of other characters for you yeah. to explore and meet throughout the world. They they talked about the, the name of their... The, there's other characters out in the world. Yes. They're, they're called the... Albert? Wardens wardens uh who all do something it's unclear yeah. but they are characters that are out in the environment that you can interact with that t maybe teach you new techniques or uh act as gym leaders or something in terms of wanting to challenge them um but they all have cool designs it's it's cool that they're having such a wide cast of of original characters for this game um and i'm i'm Personally, just as a Sino nerd, excited to see how which characters tie into the characters I'm familiar with, the great 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 grandfathers of of classic Sino characters. Yeah. That's just a, a fun touch that'll certainly make it. Oh, I didn't know that they were gonna have the the ancestor of this guy in this game. That's gonna be a lot of fun. No, definitely, and and there were really fun little touches like. One of the wardens has her has her munchlax, and she's like, "I don't need a fucking ball to keep this guy in." Like our bond is just so strong, you know. Like, yeah. so like there's some really great personality to these characters in the writing. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool if that became a mechanic, even if you could m more tame opposed to capture. Sure, a, a I would. Pokemon or two. I would doubt that, but that would yeah. be interesting. It Maybe could, that's sort of an yeah. end game thing, or could like be. there's a story beat where your partner Pokemon escapes from its Pokeball, but it loves you so much that it wants to stay with you anyway. Yeah. I mean, we did it in Let's Go. I guess that's true. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I, I think that all looks great. Um, now the noble Pokemon, they looks ugly. What do you mean when it's when it's like yellow? Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird choice. Yeah. Um, I think it's supposed to indicate pulsating with energy or whatever. And, and I'm sure it'll be better in motion, sure. as we're saying. And and honestly, I would not be surprised if they added more shading or texture to it for the final release. Maybe yes. this is the first time we're even hearing about that. Um, but aside from it's being just yellow, uh, I, I think it's an awesome idea to have actual boss battles in the environment sure. like they're designed they're not just the big angry ones that come up like these are there's a place for them there's an arena for you to battle in and you're working your way up to challenge this specific boss pokemon that's an awesome idea and that makes me a lot more interested in engaging with the combat system which isn't my favorite part of pokemon i like the exploration right. i like the lore I like the uh, collection but when there are better goals like that that will certainly be a huge benefit to me engaging with the game in that respect no no i i agree too again it's the world is being built out so much yeah. more there, there there's so many more ways to engage with pokemon so many different types of pokemon and this is a cool design what's his name uh crestazor no uh knife uh cleaver it's cleaver it's, cleaver right. it's a it's a scissor it's like it's a scissor evolution in my in my head canon but that's probably obviously true yeah it's probably a hasuian evolution yeah uh which which is a really cool idea again it just this game has so many cool ideas 100 percent. that's I, what i like most about it i really hope that they don't half-ass it on these hasuian forms when you look back at lowland forms uh they were like there was like nine of them and you're like oh okay that could have been really cool and they only cherry picked from gen one it's like okay well what's there is fine and it's a cool concept to start with and of course yeah. that was expanded with galarian forms where certain pokemon evolved in different situations and and, yeah. and there were bonus forms and stuff like that which is awesome but now we're seeing like like galarian forms entirely new pokemon and i really hope there's 30 40 of them to really round out the ecosystem and uniqueness of Hisui as its own region, quote unquote. Yeah, I, I don't know how many we'll see it. I think it'll depend on how many of these noble Pokemon there are and then sure. how many other ones they want to scatter throughout the world. But if we're operating under the assumption that it's largely the Sinodex, mm -hmm. I would imagine that because of that, they'll have a lot of space to bring in these other forms. 100%. Because they don't have to, they're not designing a whole new region's worth of Pokemon for this game. So yeah. I don't think it's too much to ask for for a good few dozen of these to be in the game. I mean, that that would really be awesome. I mean, it would lend yeah. a great sense of exploration to this region that we're technically familiar with um, and most of the Pokemon we've already seen before. But if they keep half of them or more than half, ideally, secret, and yeah. you stumble into a boss arena and you get to see an evolution for a Pokemon that you didn't know existed or a new form, that's going to be a, a phenomenal sense of discovery that other Pokemon games have had. I, I certainly had that with Sword and Shield, with stumbling on a Pokemon in the overworld that I had never seen before. True. Um, but I didn't, didn't so much happen with Gen 7 because there was a ton of leaks for that game. Like the entire Pokedex was just printed online. I'm like, are you are you kidding me? Come on, man. But yeah. I really I really hope that doesn't happen for this game because I'm super excited to want to explore the world and, and yeah. discover new things. Yeah, it just it just looks better every time. And I I find myself often for games I'm excited. Can you, what the fucking, fuck just happened? Fucking Tornadus is angry with us this morning. It's thundering like a motherfucker here in, in Massachusetts right now for, for the audience. Um, but, but what I was saying is I typically don't like to watch a lot of pre-release coverage for games yeah. I'm excited about because I kind of know what to expect it at a certain point. Like with a Metroid Dread, I just yeah. want to be surprised. But here, I want to see these trailers because this game is still so fresh yeah. and it's it's not conveying what it is yet and i don't mean that in a negative way what i mean is every time we see it we're getting a better picture of what the legends rc's experience is yeah. and every new angle we see makes this game so much more compelling and so much more fresh than even what we thought after the previous trailer yeah so i just think we're in a really good place with this title we definitely are and we're gonna be playing it soon we're what we're four months away uh, from to the day to the, holy shit to the day yeah it's september yeah. 28th uh and that's that's really exciting to have it becoming so imminently and to hopefully 
wash the BDSP flavored taste out of our mouths. Or or the game is going to be pleasantly surprising. Okay, yeah, I don't. Right. I, I, uh, the, the, well, that's the thing. I'm 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 coming around on the idea of 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 going on the eShop, sighing, big sigh, putting in my debit card information, mm-hmm. downloading the game, and having a good time with what it is. Yeah. Right. I I think I think we're getting closer to a place where that game where. It just is what it is, but what it is looks a whole hell of a lot more cohesive than what it used to be. Sure, yes, of course. And then we can just look forward to Legends Arceus continuing to surprise us and move the series forward. So yeah, and and not a terrible I, harmony. I think that the pressure on uh, BDSP is a lot lower now that it's not their biggest. Well, it is their biggest holiday title, but it's not their only holiday title. And this was announced earlier in the year. It's like. Uh oh, we don't know what's happening for the rest of the year. If this is really yeah. what they're hanging their hat on for the holiday season, that's going to be a little bit underwhelming. A, a a clearly budget remake of a DS game. Uh, but we have Nibbin at its heels, Legends Arceus, which is yeah. possibly the most uh, innovative Pokemon game to date, and surrounding it with Metroid Dread and Mario Party and things like that. So it's, it's not alone. And I think that it's yeah. it being in good company helps the game's ethos to me. No, I agree, and I think we're gonna eat. We're gonna have to eat our hats when BDSP sells 15 million units and Mario Party sells another 12 next to it, and Nintendo fucking makes that like bandits this holiday season. Yeah, and Metroid but, sells five copies. Yes, but Tucker, the, the the fucking skies have literally opened up around me. Um, so I don't know if it's coming through in the video or not, but it no, sounds I... like I'm in a fucking shower. Like I'm standing in my shower right now. Is what it sounds like. I think your your, your mic has just got some good suppression on it because I. I'm I, right now. I can't hear anything. Good because I'm about to go put on my fucking water wings in case this whole town floods. So, but Tucker, I think this is all I wanted to say really on these yeah. games. I think I, I think we're in a great place. I think we were very skeptical about where Pokemon was earlier this year, and I think they've really turned things around. One hundred percent, and we will see in one month. Holy shit. <laughs>